Hello there. So welcome back. If you haven't been here before, I am Susan Clifton. I live in South Florida and I create mixed media art. So in today's video, I'm going to take some jelly prints that I made all in one session and I'm going to create a collage. So this is just a collage that's off of a grid, sort of an uneven grid and with a little bit of other stuff on top. So I, I'm taking some circles and, and a clean off sheet and all kinds of stuff just to create a colorful collage. So let's get to it. So I have a eight by eight panel that I gessoed with some white gesso. And here are some papers that I did all on the same day, all during one jelly print session. And I had, you know, so I have like similar uh, color family. This sheet right here is actually the paint that I was using on a separate jelly plate where I was mixing my colors. And then when I was finished, I did a pull. So I did some titanium buff and I pulled all of that paint off the plate. And I just love all of that grunginess. All of those different colors are in there in various, just organic ways. And then that one little part right there is where it's stuck to the plate. But I love it. I love the way, I just love how that actually enhances. And I love that little bit of black that's showing through. Okay, so now I'm gonna start by cutting the far left edge and I'm gonna adhere this to the board right butting up against the edge. I want to keep all that really nice um, abstract that's happening on the far left. So I like to use Liquitex gel gloss, uh, gloss gel medium and I put a liberal amount on the paper. As you can see, this is very wrinkly looking, but when we adhere it to the wood, it's going to flatten out. So I add it to both the paper and the board, as you'll see. And I'm just using like a cheap brush that I got at Lowe's, like from the paint department. I try not to use like really good brushes when I'm using uh, gesso or um, gloss medium. They get ruined. You don't want your expensive brushes to get totally ruined. So now I'm using a catalyst wedge to really burnish it down and make sure that it's completely flat and I'm not getting any bubbles. And so now on the underside, I am like just trimming off the edges. And always make sure that you have a really nice sharp blade. And so now on that far right side, I'm going to trim some of that off because I'm going to put use some of my other papers on that right hand side. So some of the paper came off. That's okay. I'm not worried about it. It's going to get a bunch of things glued on top of it anyway. When you're using copy paper, it's not the best finest paper to use, but it is easy to use. Um, when you're doing gel printing, it's, it picks up nicely. And especially since I was using, you know, a jelly plate that had lots of paint layered on top of it on and like lots of layers, like maybe 10 layers of paint, I really needed to use a paper that was going to pick it up in one, in one full swoop. So now I'm thinking this black and white, um, or maybe even this other teal and black, that I could use a piece of it. 
I'm looking and analyzing all the papers that I've collected and I'm looking to see what I might do. So these circles I decided I'm going to cut out because I don't want to use like the white background. Oh, sorry, I'm off camera on this. It's sometimes hard to tell when the camera is above your head what you're actually getting. And on this particular circle, I had a straight edge, so I'm going to use it somewhere where that makes sense. And I'm going to cut just a couple of tiny ones. Well, not the real tiny ones, but the mid ones. But definitely smaller. But I like how you get a little bit of variation in color. In those bigger circles that they have the black. And that was from my marker video. If you haven't seen that, um, I'll, I'll put it up in the um, corner for you to go take a look. So I'm just cutting various shapes to see you know, while my, my gel medium is drying and I'm using my, um, my mat to line it up so that I'm getting fairly straight strips of different sizes. I love these mats, like what would we do without them? And so I, I've also decided that maybe this, this nice, uh, I think it was Titan Buff, maybe mixed with a little tiny bit of yellow. Um, I love that subtle color. Um, I also really like, I'm using my ruler as to get a full inch. Yeah, I just love that. I think the simplicity of that is really good. I'll, I'll save some of those other bits for another project. So I'm also going to use this one that's like has a lot of bold color and again this was from the same session where I you know created that main piece that I've already glued down that that was me wiping off you know or mixing my paints on another jelly plate so um, you know all the colors are going to sort of go together because it's all from the same project and I'm kind of analyzing to see where I might want to use these pieces so also I like this you know sometimes you just do a cleanup sheet or something and you get a really nice subtle texture And it's a beautiful color. I think that's the Elizarin Crimson Hue. I love that paint. It's just a gorgeous red. And so this was another piece from that background. And I like that piece of black. So I want to I want to use that for sure. Okay, so this is where we are so far, and now I, I, pre, I think I want to use some of this. So I want to just square off the edge.
still making decisions. So this black and white contrast is something that I'm always, always looking for in my work. And I think this will be, oops, a nice um, addition to the top of that column. And it will help bring your eye over from the left and then hopefully down. I always like to bring, I think your eye goes to the upper left and it kind of goes around in a circle. So I always try to do that in my compositions. So I'm not too concerned with that white space right there because I'm going to be overlapping anyway with my next piece. Okay, so now this is that piece with the little, the little bit of black that I really, really want to use here. And it's from that initial sheet with all the with all the uh, paint from my plate. And I'm thinking of using these circles this way, but I think um, I make a change. As you will see, I change my mind. So I'm thinking that that bigger piece with the marker will go up there. I like how it, that black is kind of angling down. So I've decided that um, the one with the X is actually a little bit better and I like the torn edge. Yeah, so sometimes we change our mind a lot. We change our mind, why not? Anyway, I want those that little circle there for sure. Not sure about this other one. I keep changing my mind about the circles. I think it ends up in that spot. And I love, love that piece. So I, I think I'm gonna leave it there, but let's, so I, I always like nick the corner, like where I think I'm gonna use it on. Um, then I line it up and I cut it where I, where I nicked it. That way I get the position that I want. And of course this doesn't have to be exact, you know, but I try to get as close to a right angle as I can. I'm liking that so far. I love that marker. Okay, so let's get this piece in there. I like how it has that little piece of black and you know, you see the a little bit of the layers on the teal. I think this one had a little bit of the paper behind it so it's not laying totally flat, but it'll look fine. Okay, so let's get that circle in there because I'm very sure that that's where I want it. And I'm sealing it with a little bit more of the gloss medium, sealing everything. Which now means I have to wait for it to dry. So then I got this idea that I was going to add some quinacridone yellow azo, azo gold um, on top of this. And I really didn't like the way it looked. First of all, that one came out too dark. And then I um, tried it again more with some glaze. And I still wasn't happy. So then I decide to go back to black and white.
and of course I pulled the board down too far and you can't see where I'm placing it. I really apologize for that. I'm going to have to find myself a monitor so that I could see what I'm doing. But anyway, I laid it right there above that little yellow piece. Happy with that so far. So I have this little tissue paper abstract thing that I did. Um, I just used a little high flow right out of the bottle and just, you know, drew on some tissue paper. The tissue paper should disappear when I lay it down with some gel medium. So let's, um, I'm going to put it in that teal area on the left hand side. It's kind of delicate, it tore a little bit, but that's okay. And when it dries, it did sort of blend really, really well. You, you barely see it. Right now, you could still see it pretty good, but you, it does blend. So I have heard that deli paper works better for this, but I have not find, found um, a decent deli paper yet. If you know of a good source, please um, add it to the comments below. I'd love to know where I can get some. So now I'm going to start um, playing around with my circles. Now that was my initial idea. This was what I was planning from the beginning. But then as I'm, as I'm moving around, I come up with a better idea, I think. Voila. <laughs> I suddenly decided that it belongs up there. And I think that was a good decision. So that still has that straight edge. So I want it to butt up against something straight. I, I'm not one of those people that just likes straight edges just hanging out there. Um, I don't know why, but I have, everything sort of has to be intuitive. And uh, so for me, it needs to be in a spot that it's abutting another straight line. That's just the way I am. I see other artists do it, and I like when they do it, but when I try to do it, I don't like it. Okay, so that's working so far. <clears throat> so then I decide that I need a little bit of that magenta or alizarin crimson or whatever it is. I need a little bit of that on that side. And so I tore a little piece. I kept it sort of minimal. The circles are kind of bothering me. Having a hard time figuring out where that last one should go. I decide not to labor over it too much and just lay it down. There are, there are no wrong answers, right? Okay, so I'm gonna wait for it to dry a little bit and then trim off all the edges. Seal it some more with some my new pieces with a little more gel medium. Okay, so then I, my camera died. <laughs> Um, but I've, I'm laying down some, I think it's called mulberry paper. It's almost like a fabric and it has a lot of fibers and it's very interesting. I'm not so sure that I like it, but I added it towards the end and uh, it is what it is. But I was thinking that that plain magenta area, crimson area really needed something, but I'm not so sure that I 
happy with that result. Anyway, this is a close-up. And as you could see, that tissue paper kind of disappeared into the background. Okay, so that's it. I hope you like this collage. It's not really the kind of thing that I normally do, but I wanted to experiment, always experimenting. So anyway, I hope I see you again soon. And don't forget, create, inspire, and share. And I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.